What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Drive Talk Cars. And in today's video, I'm going to show you just how to flush your own brakes. And you're going to be surprised at how easy it really is. So flushing out your brake system, what is that exactly? Basically all it is is flushing or pushing or bleeding, whatever you want to call it, out your old brake fluid from your reservoir, your brake lines and your calipers. And then new fluid is going to be introduced into those same components. And that's pretty much all it is. So I'm gonna be doing the brake flush on my Maserati Ghibli SQ4. So some things may be different for you. Um, please make sure that you look at your user manual and you get the proper brake fluid and you do the procedures based on your vehicle. From this point on, I'm gonna really be more specific into the Maserati, but the concept is still the same. Okay, so the reservoir for your brake fluid on your Maserati is gonna be in the engine bay up front on the driver's side and there's a cover right here and underneath that that's where you would see your cap for your reservoir so if you don't know what brake fluid you need for the maserati it's on the cap dot four and the brand um i don't know if it matters but i know in the owner's manual it says what brand that the factory puts in here so the fluid that i'm using is the pensaton I think I'm saying that right, but it's the Pentaton, Pent, Pentaton, <laughs> the Pentaton Super DLT4. That's what's recommended, as you saw on the cap. So you have to make sure that you get the right DLT number. Some cars have three, some have four, but the Maserati has DLT4. There's some model numbers here. I have a link to this in the description down below. So you can get some of this, but like I said, you can use other brands. Some people use Motel, some people use Castrol. So it's just depending on price point and what you're comfortable with using. I like to stay with the factory, so that's why I'm using this one. Morning. So here's a warning to you guys. Please make sure that you handle brake fluid with care. It is highly corrosive and it will destroy your car paint uh, plastics, even metals will uh, be affected by this if you were to spill it. So you really want to make sure that you have a lot of towels down, make sure that you don't spill it on your car at all, and try not to spill it on your floor either. It's very corrosive, so safety first guys. And if you do spill it, or get it let's say on your caliper or something, spray it down immediately with brake cleaner. Um, and then wipe it down spray a lot of brake cleaner on it to make sure that you get the brake fluid off But if you prep good, you don't have to worry about all that. Take your time. You should be good to go All right, let's get back to it All right, as you can see I have my tiles down like I mentioned before So make sure you cover all of your paint and your stuff in the engine Plastics metal all that first thing you want to do is wipe down this area here the brake top and around the reservoir. That way we can ensure that there's no particles or debris that will fall into the brake fluid or the brake reservoir. All right, once you have that clean, you can unscrew, then take your top off. All right, so as you can see there is pretty dirty fluid. Um, it should be relatively clear. You can see that it is lower than what it should be. The max line is in the front here. Let's see if I can get a light. The max line is in the front right there. So after you clean off your cap and you open up the reservoir, make sure you lay all your tiles down. You wanna extract the old fluid. And to do that, I'm using a, I don't even know what it's called. And to do that, I'm using an extractor tool. Uh, I think it goes up to 200 cc's. You don't have to use this. You can use a turkey baser or you can use even a syringe like those syringes that come in the medicine for kids and stuff like that you can use that but I'm gonna use this um, and when you empty it you want to empty it into a brake fluid safe container uh, and make sure you don't spill it like I said before because it's highly corrosive all right so let's get into it all right so like I mentioned we're just gonna extract the old fluid So I'm not trying to extract it to fully empty. 
because I don't want to introduce any air into the system. So I'm leaving a little bit in there, but as long as I have majority of it. I'm gonna be careful coming up with this. All right, I'm gonna cap it off so I don't spill anything. And there you have it. That's the old fluid. All right, so I'm gonna empty this into this bottle here. All right. Should be good. All right, as you can see, the reservoir is empty or relatively empty. I left a little bit at the bottom just so there's no void in fluid. Now we're going to add the new fluid into there and then seal it off and we're going to begin. One thing to note is that you always want to use a new bottle of brake fluid. You want to make sure that it's sealed. So not just new, but sealed new. That way, you don't have any bad fluid because this does not have great shelf life brake fluid so it's hyposcopic and what that means is it draws water out of the air so you don't want to store this for long a lot of people say just to throw it away once you're done with your brake flush because you really can't use it again but as you can see this is brand new sealed so let's open that up and get started all right here we go uh, you want to make sure that you keep it sealed until you use it. Once you're done using it, uh, seal it back up. So I wish I had a better funnel than this. So let's put more towels just in case. We'll double it up just so it has more protection. Okay, so put some more protection around there because I don't trust my pour that well. And this is kind of low, so safety first. And you can, and you can see the color. It's a pretty clear and it's kind of got a yellowish tone to it so we're just gonna fill it up to the max it's kind of hard to see the max but I uh, I showed you that earlier and at this stage it's okay to have too much in there because you're going to bleed it anyway and it's going to drop down in the reservoir all right so now that we have that all full we're going to start the flushing process Remember, be careful when removing anything that has touched the brake fluid. Uh, rinse it out. Brake cleaner. Just to make sure you're not spreading the brake fluid and touching stuff with it, you know. All right, so now that we filled up the reservoir with new fluid, the next step is going to depend on what you have. If you have one of these, which is a bleeder um, pressurized system where you can simulate pumping the brakes and it keeps pressure on there to flush out the fluid then this is gonna be your next step so if you don't have one of these then you're gonna need another person that can apply the brakes when you need to bleed the system but I don't have another person so I'm using this which is kind of the better method anyway it's constant pressure on the system so all you have to do is go to the bleeder valves and loosen them up and the pressure come out so it's like constant pressure on the brakes and this could potentially avoid having air in the system or introducing air into your brake lines since it is constant pressure so let's get this all connected and set up and then we'll start the flushing process all right so we have our main reservoir here and then we have the cap that goes onto the brake reservoir and that uh just replaces the other cap and then we're going to put this one on all right, nice and tight. It has a connector here that it's a twist connector and it twists to this other end right here. So people say to get a quick connector and attach it to this and this. That way you can just, you can attach it real quick like that. So a little tip, if you do decide to use this, put some Teflon tape on there and that will seal the connection even better. So now that we have everything connected, what we're gonna do is pump up the pressure to 15 PSI. If everything is working, it should hold its pressure and not drop. All right, so as we can see here, we pumped it up to 15 PSI. It's holding, so that means everything is good. There's no leaks on the connector here or back on the cap area. So we can proceed by filling up this reservoir and then starting the bleeding process. You wanna release it slowly, obviously, because you don't wanna 
anything too fast that's under pressure you'll start to hear it sizz there you go you can see the pressure going down and we're back to zero pressure well make sure you don't introduce any contaminants to the reservoir so i'm just putting the pump on a paper towel then we're going to fill up this tank with some fluid and i'll probably just use the rest of the can all right all right so i just used the rest of the can um wasn't that much left in there probably about half put that in here and we should be able to pump it back up and be ready to go all right so after filling this up we're just going to put the top back on screw it on make sure that it's tight so you can get pressure and that's usually the number one reason why you don't get pressure because this cap is not tight enough all right now we can start pumping all right 15 psi so we should be good okay so now that we have everything pressurized fluid in there we're good to go now before you start there is a particular sequence that you have to go in and that varies per car but the formula basically is you want to start from the furthest point from the master cylinder so on the Maserati Ghibli the master cylinder is on the driver's side so we're going to start on the passenger rear tire that's the furthest point from uh, the master cylinder now this will vary per car if your master cylinder is on your passenger side then you will do the rear driver side first so now we have the tire off i'm gonna go ahead and show you how to bleed the brakes which in turn is flushing the system from the master cylinder all the way back to the caliper and then we're just going to bounce back from this one to the driver's side to the front passenger to the front driver okay so what i have set up here is my drip pan just in case brake fluid falls out and then another thing you're going to need is a repository to collect the old brake fluid i got this on amazon i have a link in the description down below to this it was like 14 bucks i believe but the cool thing about this is it has a magnet on it it has a magnet and then it also has this string here it's not really a string but it's a wire and you can attach it and hook it somewhere up here but the magnet is cool because i can just put it on the rotor connect it like that and then i'll have that there and then this over here and it's just chilling and that'll give me a hands-free operation now you can make this bottle i've seen people use like a gatorade bottle or a water bottle it's got to have a top and a tube um, and the tube needs to fit over the bleeder valve on your calipers uh, one more thing you would have to do is make sure you drill a hole into the lid because that allows for the air to escape if not then it's going to be under pressure and then it will spit out but i decided just to buy one all right for my brake calipers there's two uh bleeder valves one on the outside and one on the inside and what you want to do for that is do the outside first then the inside because this will be the very furthest point from the master cylinder most of the big brakes uh brimbo and all that come with covers to your bleeder valves so you just take that off and it's on there pretty good obviously these are great to have so it protects this valve from getting dust and debris in it so now we're going to release this valve here i'm going to be using an 11 millimeter uh, wrench but i'm going to be using the box side i'm going to put that on first and then put on my tube you want to make sure your tube is on there good and fully so it doesn't pop off and squirt brake fluid all over because like i mentioned before it is very corrosive and now all we're going to do is just release this and then it should start filling up over here the more you open this the more it flows and the faster it flows you can see it's green in color what we're looking for is the clear color in the tube clear and clean all right i can see that it's coming clear now so i'm going to close it off 
You want to be careful not to over tighten these. They are pretty uh, fragile aluminum, so we don't want that to break. But tighten it wrist tight and you should be good to go. As you can see, quite a bit of the old came out. Now we're going to take this off here and we're going to go to the back one. All right, so I'm going to pinch this off. I don't want it to spill. So I'm just going to ease this off to get some air in the tube and then everything should fall down and into there like so. All right, now we have that. Take our tool off, make sure it's tight, then return the cover back onto the blear valve. And then that is all for the outside. Then we're going to move to the inside and repeat and that'll be it for this one. Now with this much fluid, we probably want to empty it out. Um, make sure that it is a safe container to put the fluid in. Alright, so what I'm going to do is recycle the old can and put the old fluid into there. So now we have this empty, we can move on to the other side of the caliper. So good practice is to check your pressure on your bleeder just to make sure that it's holding at the 15 PSI. Sometimes once you bleed, you might have to do a little bit more pumping on your bleeder. All right, you can see that it went down a little bit. So let's just give it a few pumps. All right, now it's back at 15 and we can continue on. Just like the outside, we're just gonna release the valve. All right, so that's one down in the rear. Now we're just gonna move over to the driver rear tire, then the front passenger side and front driver side. I'm gonna do the other side off camera, but I will get back on camera once we hit the front side. But it's the same process. So there may come a time where you actually have to fill this back up. What you wanna do is release the top slowly, let that air pressure off, and you hear a little, little release of the air, like that. And then you're gonna have to fill it up. I didn't start with a full quart. It was only probably about half a quart. So that is the reason why I probably have to fill up. So using the same fluid, we're gonna fill up the reservoir again. I'm just gonna put the whole thing in there. Especially since you can't save it, might as well use the whole thing. Make sure that that's tight. Then we're gonna start it over again and pump this up to 15. All right, we're at 15, so let's get back to it. All right, so we finished the rear. We bled both calipers on the passenger and the driver's side in the rear. Now we're gonna move to the passenger's front and then finish up on the driver's front side. So the front caliper is pretty much the same way. We have two bleeder valves outside, inside. Take them off, put the bottle on the same way, and then you move to the driver's side and you're done. You can see all this dirt coming out. So that's what you wanna see. The dirt, uh, the color, it'll start to change to a clear color and that's how you know when you're uh, done flushing it out. You can see right here how dark it is. So it's definitely the old fluid coming out. When you see your line, see, and that's why I have my spill tray. Completely unexpected, but the tray did its job and caught all the brake fluid. All right, so we're backing that off. Since we have clear liquid coming through, now we can take this, close it off, pinch this off, let some air come through, and then let the rest drain down in there. So as you can see, by the time you get to the last caliper, the liquid comes out as it should, brand new. It's clear, but it has that little yellowish tone to it. So we're on the last break, doing the inside, and that is it. All right, so we've completed the flushing of the brake system. We've done all four calipers, starting from the passenger rear, moving over to the driver rear, passenger front, and then finishing up at the driver's front. 
So now all we have to do now is relieve the pressure off of the bleeder and then reseal the cap on the master cylinder reservoir. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that the level of the fluid is at the max mark. And if it isn't, then we can reduce it. Now, if you're replacing your brake pads after doing this, then you wanna go ahead and extract a lot more of that fluid down. That way, when you press your calipers out, then you will fill back up that reservoir with fluid and it won't overflow. All right, the pressure is off of the bleeder. Go ahead and seal that. All right, as you see, there's fluid left in here. So you have to be very careful when you pull this out. Um, I'm loosening it up very slowly. All right, we were able to get it without spilling it. So there's a little trick to see where your uh, fluid is. If you shine a light down in there, then you can see where your fluid is. All right, so once it's at the proper level, put your cap back on, then you're done with this part. If you enjoyed this video, please give me that thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, check out these videos over here. And remember, do it until you can't. Until next time, I'm out.